All right, good afternoon, everybody. Swing this bad boy on over. Professor Bobo here. And I am proud to present you guys with the first round of action for the TCS Heroes Fall Finale. TESPA has uh, been running a preseason setup uh, for the uh, college esports team. And we're here for a little bit of Heroes of the Dorm action. We have three rounds going on today. And we are going to get things started with Dakota State going up against Durham College. It's technically better. Uh, goes up against the Durham Lords Esports Club. Two teams with similar records. They're very close in terms of the rankings in the regular season, which you can check out on TESPA.com. The leaderboards are up there. Uh, and again, I'm super proud to bring this to you. Uh, if you're just new to this setup, uh, my name is Professor Bobo. Uh, I am the uh, caster and uh, leader of a group uh, that is going to be casting throughout the weekend. We are the Casters for Hire. We have joined forces, and uh, we've been working with the TESPA admins to provide you guys with a great show for the weekend. So, up first, a little bit of the tournament overview. Uh, once again, this is a 64-team single elimination bracket, and everybody's qualified through the TESPA leaderboard. Uh, we're going to have a bunch of uh, best of threes this round, and we're using HGC-style resets, so we'll be using the nine-map uh, pool that is currently used there in HGC. And, uh, and keeping up with some of our balance patches, we do have to note that Malganis is going to be legal for this setup. Uh, as a tank player for my amateur side, I am actually really hoping to see some Malganis action. We'll see if uh, he makes an appearance here. And we'll just go ahead and jump in and take a look at uh, the setup here for uh, the maps. Uh, and we do have, uh, on the left side here, Dakota State in blue, they have banned out uh, Sky Temple. And in response, Durham College has removed Tomb of the Spider Queen. We are headed to Infernal Shrines, and... Uh, if you're a little unfamiliar with the uh, amateur scene here in NA, Infernal Shrines is easily the most popular map for uh, just about every single level. Uh, it's up there with Towers of Doom, um, but uh, Infernal is one uh, map in which if you have a best of three set and you go to three games, there is a fantastic chance that you are going to be taken to that map. And we'll keep up in between these sets with uh, who does... Uh, the picking of what map selection, as well as, of course, who has picked up the win. So, just keep an eye out here for what's going on. Teams have told us that they are ready. Chat, let me know. Uh, let me just make sure that, um, certainly that uh, the sound is okay on your end. Let me know. Did a sound check sounded pretty good? But, if uh, Twitch needs a little bit of help, let me know. Let's go. Let's head to draft. First pick will belong to Durham College. This is Dakota State's map pick. With Infernal being such a popular map, all of the high meta heroes do have a place here. So we do expect to see some sort of play involving Diablo. Uh, this is a very popular Hanzo map. Heroes that have really strong clear are always a bonus, so sometimes you do get the ghoul Dan's. Um... A lot of times the offlane hero can also be geared towards map clear. We do get a fair amount of Sonya on this map. Blaze is a good pickup as well. We do see the Jaina Van coming out. And this being Infernal Shrines, one hero to always, always keep an eye on, is going to be Alex Straza. Now, Alex Straza is a hero that, uh, through the use of her trait with the Dragon Queen there, can just show up to the point, and we'd figure with about 20 Skeletal Defenders captured, Alex will uh, pop Dragon, and then she just becomes a very difficult hero to deal with. Provides extra clear, extra bit of uh, support, and we do throw her stats up there, so okay on the win rate. She's one of the better supports, but not one of the high tiers. And again, we're just going to keep, keep an eye and see if she actually does get picked up here. Uh, Decker Kane and Taronda are considered to be stronger heroes in the meta, but Alex does have her place. And a first pick, Kerrigan, from Durham. Stats today are going to be provided, if you will, by the HGC Phase 2 setup. We have pulled stats from uh, North America, Korea, as well as Europe. We get the URL and the Johanna pick up URL. Uh, Right now, it's just a massive part of the meta. I'll throw those stats up there. Greymane and Deckard have been picked up. We do get the Johanna. That's a beefy defensive front line 
for Dakota State. Countered here by Kerrigan and Grayman. That is single target burst, although we'll see which heroic Grayman wants to go into, whether he wants to uh, talent into go for the throat or cursed bullet. The Deckard Kane, a bit expected. And then we do get the Alex ban, as Kane has been picked up already. You can see Yorel there on the bottom of the stats there, up at the pro scene, by almost a 70% involvement rate. And that's a good win rate. When you see heroes around 50% when they have a very high pick rate, um, that's just sort of natural. That's how the stats kind of normalize themselves, if you will, over a larger data set. Got a Brightwing and a great skin at that. Dakota State moves into Brightwing and Kael'thas. This is... A really defensive setup. The Brightwing does have the ability to counter Kerrigan hard through the Polymorph. It's extra protection for Kael'thas as he looks to stat globes for mana attic, which you do expect. And that's a main tank Uther. Adaptation here from Durham College. Blaze likely to be in the offlane. Uther up front will provide extra support for Kerrigan, but Uther did go through... A little bit of adjustment. He got a little bit extra stun. Uther has shot up in the win rates. And I like this from Durham College. They're doing something a little different. They are supporting the Kerrigan as well. The wait is over. And there is Cassia to finish things off. Cassia for the blinds will do a good bit of work on Grayman and Kerrigan. We'll also have to take a look and see if uh, Uther winds up being affected. A lot of times, Uther's when they move into sort of a bruiser, a little bit of a frontline role. Um, Uther will talent into the uh, sort of auto attack build, if you will, to pick up more stuns. The old Hammer of the Lightbringer. All right, once again, thank you guys for joining us. We'll go through a little bit of a pause here. As we sort of get teams set up and thrown into the lobby. Once again, we're headed to Infernal Shrines on our first map. This is Dakota State going up against Durham College. Game number one. Best of three set. Uh, for the first round of the TCS Heroes Fall Finale. I do Listen, I like both of these drafts. Uh, both of the, these drafts were sort of geared around the first pick, Kerrigan. Um, and we're going to see what Panda can do on this hero. We got the Brightwing to counter it out, but the Uther to support carry. Hey, let's jump in on the side of Dakota State. We are going to have Havox playing the Johanna Blue, 1442 on the Brightwing. Bobby Hill going to be playing that Cassia Sifts on Kael'thas. Headed on up to the top lane, Baby Eggs will be playing the Urel. And here for Durham College, Sir Taco on the Blaze. Bearded Baron will be playing Grey Mane. Joe Jack on the Uther Deathbringer. Maybe looking to bring the support here on the Deckard Kane. And all eyes are going to be on Panda. As we're going to start things off with a Kerrigan. Fairly standard talent. Excuse me, talent picks. We do get Hammer the Lightbringer for Uther. We'll keep an eye on this talent here. Basic attacks, basic attacks, and more basic attacks. Trying to get more stuns on. Joe Jack with the aggressive positioning as we take a look at what's going on. Swing and a miss from Panda on the first combo. No harm done on either side. And just double checking this Kael'thas. That is Mana Addict. Ain't no quick match Kael'thas. No convection here. Good bit of damage from Bobby Hill. This is oppressive poke with Kerrigan as well as Kael'thas. Excuse me, with Cassia. As well as Kael'thas. Havoc's getting the early rotation lead. This is what Johanna does best. She will put your team in an advantageous position through her early game wave clear. You can already start to see, and this is just a function of the lack of wave clear. Particularly, you know, the Uther. He's just looking to try to get some stuns going. There's a double combo there from Kerrigan. Panda looking to get some kills. Uther has to back out. Root comes through. Brightwing using her new baseline cleanse. Good bit of poke and everybody's safe. Team's about even in XP. Bearded Baron is going to get started on the Khazra camp on the Durham College side. Take a peek up in the top lane. Baby X pushing into Sir Taco. Blaze has gone through a number of changes as Blizzard has looked to move him into more of a tank role. But he does function very well in the offlane still. He's got great clear. Good survivability. 
And we'll take a look and see if Sertako can bring the heat later in this matchup. More poke there in the middle of the field. Kerrigan with a combo actually did miss on the stun. It was a very good grasp from Panda. Here's the iron skin and the move in there from Havix. Bobby Hill with a Fen getting a good bit of damage on. That damage will spread out. Keep an eye on the mana. We already see that with the uh, better wave clear, grabbing those globes on the side of Dakota State has put them in a position where their heroes are full. On the flip side, Durham College a little bit behind in that regard. Panda has a wave to clear here. Four man commit from Dakota State as they will look for the camp. Both teams have hit level four. Both teams just about even. A little bit of 4v4 in the bot lane. This is a top lane shrine. Expect to see Brightwing maybe taking full use of the global. Maybe hanging out here for as long as possible. Joe Jack in a bit of trouble on the Uther there. Walks away from the Polymorph. Kane with the Haradric Cube deters Dakota State from any further push. Iron Skin used. Johanna safe. Root there connects on Bobby Hill. A little bit of poke from Bearded Baron. Both teams content to get a little bit of skirmish there in the bottom lane. Brightwing in trouble. Um, and she goes down. First kill of the game and it will go over to Bearded Baron on the Greymundo. Very nice play there. Patience and persistence from Duran College as their CC chain works. This being a Brightwing, she will certainly be able to global on up top. Baby Eggs does get started here in the top lane. We'll be joined by Bobby Hill. A quick Menke advantage. Eight skeletal defenders have been picked up before Panda gets here. And now Kerrigan will begin to go to work. Fans, we do have the Hero Share extension running. You should be able to proc talents on the right side of the screen through the overlay there. Big Fen from Cassia. Getting a lot of damage and a lot of value. Panda trying to get behind the gate. Sertako popping Pyromaniac on the trait. Long way for Joe Jack. But he's out. 16 to 5. The taps come through. Durham College is going to be looking for a way back in. 21-5. 25 skeletal defenders. They're going to need to make quick work of Dakota State here, who is backing off. Keep an eye on Sifts in the back lane. Kael'thas does need to be careful. Jet Propulsion comes through. They're looking for KT. Gets grass. Dodges the root, however. And now the counter engages on. Johanna pops Iron Skin. There's a lot of damage coming out. Joe Jack in a bit of trouble. Sertako has the bomb on him. Bearded Baron, however, looking to get a kill there. Going in deep. Johanna gets away. One auto attack away. Uther is dead. We'll look to try to help Greymane get out. Dark Flight on out of here. Baby Eggs with a bit of chase. But the end result is that Bobby Hill and company are going to finish off this first objective. A Frozen Punisher will be running it down top lane. 1-1 one, one on kills. Level 7 for both sides. Dakota State looking to pick up the early advantage here. Punny up on the wall. Jumps over. Sir Taco was the target. There's the root from Kame to try to deter the follow-up. Combo does miss from Kerrigan. And now four members of Dakota State are moving in. They've got a lot of value out of the Fen. It's been a bit of an early Fen, which sometimes can be an issue. But Bobby Hill has consistently hit three different targets. He's looking to get Blaze out of there now. He's got the dot on him. Deathbringer's trying to make sure he doesn't spread the bomb. Huge combo and Bearded Baron comes through. Panda setting that up. Kerrigan actually finishes off Cassia. Now everybody trying to retreat away. Joe Jack looking to provide the extra bit of kill. Blue's trying to get the teleport. There's the cleanse. A very good play from Brightwing, but what can Panda do? Brightwing goes down. Kael'thas gets out. Johanna gets out okay. The Fort and the Well live. Three kills for Durham College. And a fairly successful defense as they do keep themselves within range for that race to level 10. We talked about the Uther sort of main tank, if you will. Uh, it's a different style. More CC on the front line. And a good Uther is never afraid to die for his team. Uh, in fact, shout out to Joe Jack. He actually did a great job of getting Bearded Baron out of a sticky situation there. Uh, as the fight was over the top lane. And now, an invade coming through. And our first of the game... Brightwing smells it out a little bit. But the members of Dakota State are a little bit more occupied in the top lane. This will be an easy pickup for Durham College. 
Kazer Camp mid for Durham Esports. Expect them, yes, and they will move for the neutral camp in the bottom lane. Good quick macro. Grayman and Kerrigan have fantastic presence on a mercenary camp. Or members of Dakota State there in the mid lane will have to respond. And we'll see if Baby Eggs, maybe, with the help of some minions, is going to get this fort done well. And that'll be level 10. Now we'll have to keep an eye on the bottom lane. Havoc has gone in here. We've got Blessed Shield. We've got Emerald Wind. Ball Lightning as well as Phoenix. And we do get the Ball Lightning out. Bobby Hill looking for the kill. Uther goes down first. However, Uther is going to support Kerrigan in now. The counter kills are coming through. Cassia goes down. We do see Emerald Wind. Phoenix is down. However, the mobility on the side of Durham is making their way on out of that situation a one for one uther for cassia a lot of our buttons clicked we saw everything but stay a while from the four on four battle that was going on great snap engagement from dakota state however cassia gets traded out if cassia survives there that could have been a disaster for durham college but they do manage to pick on the javazon Take a quick look at our stats. We also have Maelstrom, Divine Shield. We get Go for the Throat, Bunker, and Stay a while. A little bit of extra macros. Beard of Beard thought about it. Now the Camp Invade's coming through. This is going to be a quick collapse, and we've got to keep an eye on Durham. Joe Jack leading at the front. This camp has not been finished yet. Sir Taco does have Bunker. Stay a while is there in addition. However, Joe Jack has been isolated. He's in big trouble. Uther about to go down. Stay a while and listen comes out. Everybody fighting over this camp. A lot of low blue health bars. Brightwing goes down. Emerald Wind, not enough to save. 4v4 on the point. Blaze standing on it. Panda looking good. Cassia goes down. Bearded Baron trying to roll away. Baby Eggs now. Seeing if there's a counter kill to be had. Yorel with the hammer now has to go through this long corridor. There's the Goomba Stomp trying to get away. The Root just misses. Bearded Baron with the chase. And there's Maelstrom. Kerrigan looking to maybe get the advantage going here. Has sounded out that Kael'thas is the target. Brightwing coming through will be able to prevent that kill. Uh, it's again a lot of R buttons, and now this makes for a very interesting shrine. Dakota State has to worry about the counter push in the top lane. Ardent Defender is up. Emerald wins soon. The shorter cooldowns are on the side of Dakota State as they have less than 10 seconds on Blessed Shield, Ball Lightning, as well as Phoenix. Looks like they're waiting for Johanna to come back. Cassia and Urel are up in the top lane. They're very likely to... Uh, Make an aggressive flank play here if they can come in. No Maelstrom for Kerrigan. Stay a while. We'll be back shortly. Phoenix comes out. Bit of zone. Havix is at the front line. And now they're covering both exit points. Let's see if the bloke from Blaze can do it. Jet Propulsion connects on both right wing as well as Cassia. Bobby Hill the target yet again. Johanna providing a good bit of disrupt. We see the... Ooh. Blessed Shield stopping stay a while. Bunker's out. Arcane Punisher, however, is picked up as Panda has finished this off. We do see Emerald win with the disconnect. Keep an eye on the Punisher. No jump. And now Dakota State's on the defense. Kael'thas. Gone. Panda with the combo. John Cena now running it down mid lane. Very nice combos there from Durham College. They seem like they are sort of growing into this game. Urel, with the Ardent Defender, will be low. Brightwing coming in. Havix is in trouble. There's the Maelstrom. Johanna has gone down. Blue helping the rest of the technically better squad get away. 8-3 in terms of kills. Kerrigan starting to get some momentum going. Our first fort has been claimed by... Excuse me, has the first fort for Durham College has been claimed, so... Each team may be thinking about how to build a win condition here as we do get to the 13 talents here. Bearded Baron and Deathbringer will get started. This is four men bottom. Panda backed on the Kerrigan and certainly will be coming back shortly. Here comes the chip damage as well as the neutral Shaman camp in the bot lane. And with a Grey Mane... This is going to be quick work of the fort. This is the second time this game that Durham College has put the focus on the bottom lane while Dakota State has settled for the top shaman camp. It fielded them a fort earlier in the game. It has cost them a fort here. 
Certainly Blaze will have to go top lane. Durham College now trying to build towards the 16 talent tier. They are three quarters of a level ahead. The 16 talent tier on the next objective will be critical. And another critical piece of information is that this is going to be a bottom shrine. And this is problematic for Dakota State. They Not only are they lacking a fort in both lanes, they do not have a well. Havoc's in. I thought maybe we get a Blessed Shield combo. Thought better of it there. Sir Taco bringing the Carnitas on up top. We'll clear that camp. The five members of Dakota State looking to get some safe soap going. Half level for 16 for Durham College. Dakota State perhaps looking to find an advantageous fight while they are currently staring at a very difficult talent tier to be down. Being at, what, 14 and a half. It's going to be very tough for them to get to 16 before this next objective is up. You may want to think about maybe putting your L in the top lane for a little while. At 12 minutes in, uh, that extra level, I don't know, maybe... Eight or nine waves to go from 15 to 16, if my scaling is correct. Speaking of 16, there it is. And there is our objective announcement as well. Bot lane Punisher. Baby Egg sort of dancing around the shrine. Dakota may have to just give this up. The counterplay here would really be to start pushing it down in the top lane. The win condition for Dakota State is top. Maybe they hope that uh, they get a little bit of Bless RNG and a later objective is going to be in the top lane and maybe they can start to run it down. About a half level away from 16, but with the speed that Kerrigan Blaze, as well as Grey Main, will clear this off, this is going to be tough. Already up to 15 skeletal defenders. And now 20. Level 16 nearly there. Good bit of chip damage. That extra tower will be 16. However, with 30 skeletal defenders, I'm not 100% sure Dakota State wants this. Let's see. 35. And they're going to give it up. We see Havoc's and Baby Eggs. The frontliners there retreating out. The goal for Dakota State here. Do not lose a keep. That will be their path to stay in this. Durham College will pick up the Khosra camp on their opponent's side. Mortar Punisher. Everybody's least favorite for offense. Here comes the jump. Connects on both Brightwing as well as Johanna. There was the cleanse from Blue. Keep an eye on that. But the very good clear from both Kael'thas and Cassia means that this Punisher is not long. This is only a 14 minute Punisher. It means a top wall goes down. Now the retreat from Durham College Esports. Tenuous affair. 8-3 in terms of kills, and it was 8-3 after the second objective. The team's just dancing around each other here a little bit. More macro from Durham College. They've been very aggressive about picking up camps. That is part of the reason. Certainly not the only one that they are ahead right now. About a level. Both teams roaming a bit as five. Dakota State shirked around for an, uh, an even talent tier team fight in a number of different locations. This is risky. This camp can be taken very quickly. However, here comes Dakota. Now they see the cap. Let's see if Havoc can get a little bit of chase there. The disengage is safe. It's a pivotal moment here. Dakota State's, you know, looking for opportunities where they can start to close this XP gap. They are three levels to 20, and they have... I guess you could say a little scared. Um, they've been running with, you know, a five-man, probably in fear of the Kerrigan. I see Titans King in chat. What's happening, brother? Titans King, a member of Cal Poly Pomoda, the number one seed. I believe Crow is going to look up uh, to see if he can pick up Pomona in the third round. And then on Sunday, assuming the number one seed advances, the Casters for Hire will be picking up every single Sunday match for you guys. 
we want to make sure that the last eight is fully covered and that is our intent and we believe we will have it done blaze Mr. Taco escaping there not a ton of engage for Dakota State that's also been a, just a slight problem here in the laning phase the, you know, the majority of their engagement has to be behind whatever Johanna can do. And in fact, you at this point in the game, you really need to use Blessed Shield in order to get a full engage if you are, you know, chasing a hero. Uh, or if that hero is walking away. However, for DSU, they were very successful in the first shrine. Really because they showed up first. And they have this just great defensive setup with Urel. Brightwing having Emerald Wind as well as Johanna. Level 20s will not be here for either team for uh, quite a while. We'll see how this plays out. Over the top shrine. Oh! Keep an eye on Panda. Kerrigan. Knocked back. Great Righteous Hammer. We see the root came out. Fantastic play from Baby Eggs. Read that one well. Phoenix comes out. That's a short cooldown. In the meantime, Durham College is going to have to clean this one up. Kazra Camp gone. We did see Blessed Shield come out in that team fight as well. Those are 40 second cooldowns. The win condition is here in top, and there is no well available. So, despite using two of their sort of shorter heroics, Dakota State had a solid position here if they need to back up and reset. Joe Jack moving in. Panda sharking around. Kerrigan's looking for a kill here. Blue's been in the bush. Needs to be careful there. We see Cassie as well as Brightwing a little close. Bearded Baron right now in worgen form and flips away. Level 20's nearly here. Greymane's trying to get that passive XP. Havoc goes in. There is the jump in from Yorel. That's a long way for Dicker Kane to find a way out. In fact, he gets hit by the Ignite, and that's a bit of an issue, but he'll be okay. Panda. Focusing on the Johanna. Nothing doing there. 20 to about 10 on the Shrine. There's another Phoenix. Brightwing with the Emerald Wind. There's the Disengage. 24 skeletal defenders have been picked up, but 20s are here. We'll flash these talents really quick, try to see what happens. And immediately, gone is Cassia. Ball lightning, or excuse me, gone is Brightwing. Mail, uh, Maelstrom gets procced. Joe Jack actually using Divine Shield on himself to stay alive. Kerrigan has the cleanse, but Kerrigan is super low. Cassia goes down. That's a good trade. The bunker is out. We got a number of low health heroes, but four kills come through. Greymane with a cocktail finish, and the Worgen form finishes off. Four kills on this top shrine as soon as level 20 comes through. Yep, what's happening, brother? And Durham College seizing control. Wow. Shout out to the Baron. Working the Greninja. Sifs is looking to pick up a camp just to try to steal it away here because certainly uh, ooh, Durham would have been thinking about it. Joe Jack's here. Kael'thas retreats out. There's a gravity lapse for your troubles, Uther. This should be a keep. I would anticipate with about two kills and this being an arcane punisher, so lasers coming out from Messer Cena. Uh, two kills should be game for Durham. Cena. Felt like finishing the well off. And here comes the bunny. Wall opened up. Presumably for Kerrigan and Greyman to try to find a kill. We don't see any combos coming out here yet. Keep an eye on Panda. There's the root. Johanna is low. Keeping an eye on that. Baby eggs with a good righteous hammer. A lot of good URL play. That's a five man stun. Jet propulsion misses. No follow-up. Kane with a stay a while. We see Johanna in the sleep. Immediate divine shield as Kerrigan dives the back line with Maelstrom. Johanna in a bit of trouble. We got Phoenix on the point as well. The target right now is Bobby Hill on Cassia. Brightwing trying to get the teleport before she goes down. Havix gets dragged. Johanna goes down. That's the first kill. And there is a great zone out. Yorel with the Ardent Defender. She's trying to find a way out. Jojak low. Remember, this is Uther. Redemption could be online. This is a camp, a Punisher, and a lot of low members of Durin College. Shield has been broken. Laser is about to go away. Jojak goes down. Sir Taco with a good jet propulsion, 30. Damage looks like it's there. If nobody gets rid of Kerrigan and Greyman, that should be it. Cassia goes down to go for the throat. 10%. 5, and Durham College sees his game number 1. Great end of a game there.
Kane actually got finished off there. Uther came back with Redemption. Durham College with Grayman and Kerrigan, two exceptional heroes to have on a core. Finish this one off. What a great way to start the set off. What a great way to start the stream and this tournament. Early advantage in this game belonged to Dakota. Uh, State University has technically better look good. However, as you can see from the stats here, um, really Kerrigan and Greymane were, were focused on getting rid of Cassia and or Brightwing. Blue 1442 was some aggressive positioning, looking for some good uh, Emerald wind plays. Got a couple... But there were a few occasions where Panda sort of snuffed out where the Fairy Dragon was. And that really made the difference between uh, the two teams, particularly on the points. Red has taken game number one. Red, of course, being the members of uh, Durham College. And we'll update our scores. Get everything looking there. Take a quick peek at our talents before we get set up. So this being the HGC-style rule set, the loser... Uh, of each game has the option of selecting either first pick or map pick. And actually, that has come through. We will be headed to Dragonshire up next. We're just going to go ahead and update some of the uh, fantastic overlays here. So, Durham College takes it. Oh, i got to flip my webcam open. My bad. Sometimes we turn it off between games. Alrighty. What did we get? What did we get? There we go. We're headed to Dragonshire, folks. Another high macro com uh, excuse me, map. Um, and a bit of a difficult one. Uh, I'm a caster on the amateur scene here in NA, and I can tell you that Dragonshire is one of the more popular maps to get banned out. A lot of teams just don't like playing it. Um, you do get a lot of high priority here on globals, for sure. There sometimes can be a little bit of a different hero pool. Um, you do get a lot more camp clear heroes. We saw Jaina get banned out immediately, actually, by Durham College. Let's go ahead and get teams into our lobby. Thank you guys for joining me. Chat, love to see you. Thank you for joining me. Uh, there's a number of different streams going on today. So, you know, if we have a quick set, just take a look over at uh, the Heroes of the Storm page on Twitch. Anybody who's got the uh, tag going TCS Heroes Fall Finale in their title uh, will be bringing you more of the Tespa Saturday setup. All right. What do we want to see differently in game two? I liked both drafts. Uh, I thought they were, you know, very strongly geared towards what we saw in the early part of that draft. That first pick, Kerrigan, um, I didn't really know where the draft was going to go for Durham College, so what we did wind up seeing was uh, uh, when they went Kerrigan Greymane early before the secondary ban phase, we saw Cassia come out. We're trying to get blinds on those auto-attack heroes. And then the other thing that we saw is the Brightwing adaptation trying to get the, you know, the poly CC chain going on Kerry. But shout out to Durham College. They broke out an Uther main tank to support the Kerrigan up front uh, in, as well as the Decker Kane. Uther Kane's a neat little double support combo because on one side you have, you know, the sustained heals, if you will, from Decker Kane who wants to get those pots out uh, onto the point. And then you get the burst heals, not just the burst heals, but also Divine Shield as well as Cleanse for Uther. All right. And we're starting to get these teams to trickle back in for game number two. Once again, we see Sky Temple as well as Tomb Band out. Leaving up a couple of my favorite maps. Maybe we'll see a Towers game if we get to game three. That's my fave. Team's trickling in right now. Once again, Dakota State has chosen both of the first two maps here. Durham College is trickling on in. We'll check in with our teams, make sure that they are ready before we move on into game two. All of our overlays... And our wonderful caster tool has been provided by the Casters for Hire Discord, of which I am a part of. Um, if you are looking for casters to maybe help you out with your tournament, your league setup, or if maybe you yourself are looking to break into the caster ranks, um, listen fam, take a peek at my Twitch pa uh, panels down there. You can join our Discord. 
Um, and in addition for uh, today's, as well as tomorrow's setup, we've set up Night, uh, Nightbot to get us a couple of commands. We're going to throw out the bracket here. So that command should be up and running. This way you can follow the bracket throughout the weekend. Dragonshire is um, a similar map to Infernal Shrines in just sort of the design. It very heavily favors, you know, a, a great four-man setup and a strong solo laner. The one thing that we saw in game number one is that Duro College was faster to get to the mercenary camps. And here on Dragonshire, that makes a huge difference. The uh, night camps in the top lane are very difficult for most offlaners to clear effectively if you are quick on that timer. And one minute into Dragonshire, the camps will start to spawn. On the flip side, in the bottom lane... Uh, a very popular strategy is to go ahead and grab your own giants on your side of the map and then move for the neutral knights that are there tucked away in that bottom corner. A double camp push on Dragonshire in bot lane is oppressive. It is it just a, uh, actually is a better way to push, in my opinion, than sort of banking on getting a very early dragon. Both teams are, so we'll get going in our draft soon. Um, so I'm going to keep an eye on the macro play. Again, Durham College was a little bit ahead of Dakota State there. Uh, and we'll see if they're going to be aggressive about it. Teams signal that they are ready. Game number two. Headed to Dragonshire. First pick will go over to Durham College. Once again, Dakota State opting for map pick. Actor, I see you in chat. Actor, one of the NGS mods. Always a pleasure to catch you here, man. Keep up the fantastic work. You're a hero. There's that Jane Bane again. Obviously, Durham College is sort of keyed in on this Jaina, and... Uh, Regardless of how Dakota State feels about the hero, Jaina is the... Ooh, spice. Jaina is the best mage in the game right now. She does everything well. She's got wave clear. She's got camp uh, presence. Two fantastic heroics as well as her PvP prowess. What is this Illidan ban? I'm happily confused. Tyrande also removed by Durham College. So that's that's an illy ban. No donger for you. Dakota State take a little bit of time here with their second ban. We bring up just how sort of special the Illidan ban is. I'm going to flash some stats here. And this once again, this is from the HGC Phase 2 stats. Illid is not popular. There's a Malganus ban. First pick Malganus. Mm. Durham College making me happy. Oh, baby, are we going to talk about the Dreadlord? Okay. So, if you're not up on your meta quite yet, this is really the first time that we're able to see Malganus, you know, in sort of live setups. Uh, he was not present for any of the HTC setup as he was not available um, for BlizzCon. There's a the Kate in the Johanna. That's just a second uh, Johanna pick. We'll flash some Johanna stats as well. There's a Genji as well as a Yiral. Come on, Tool. Yeah. There's our Johanna stats. Malganus is a just a fantastic hero. His base kit right now is the the probably the worst part about him if you're playing against him. He has an incredible CC combo with the uh, three hits on Felk Claws, the last hit popping you up for a stun. And you can very quickly follow that up with Night Rush. Uh, he's got a 2.5 second duration sleep a baseline. And really what Malganus does is, 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 you know, so long as he isn't interrupted and he gets on your back line, he just disables... A minimum of two heroes. And he allows for incredible follow-up combos. And we have to keep an eye on Malganus and Genji here. If Malganus can find his way onto a weak target 
and he can provide that CC combo. Expect to see the Swift Strike for the finisher by Genji. Mouthy Oban, Lucy Oban out as well. Gul'dan is here, as is Dahaka. So the lone global thus far belonging to Dakota State. Genji did make it through the first draft. Genji, one of the most popular heroes. Because he's also over that sort of 60% threshold. We got a Grey Mundo and a Lily. Durham College. Taking some different picks here in draft. Start things off with a Melganis. Want to take us on an adventure? Panda Power. The Lily is, I, I mean, I guess you could say strange in that um, Lily herself doesn't really have anybody to blind here. Now does have Phoenix, but not all the Phoenix's damage is based, of course, on the uh, auto attacks. Deathbringer opted for the Lily. You know, the one respect that I like seeing the Lily, and I hope to see a lot of value, is if Baby Eggs on that Tahaka looks to burrow in. Anytime we uh, do get a drag play, perhaps it's going to be... Uh, you know, actually, it definitely will be up to Lily to prevent that target from going down. Game number two. We're headed on over to Dragonshire right now. Genji, get get, get out of there. All right. Um, mm. So once again, this sort of... I guess you could kind of call it a little bit of a standard. It's a little bit more of a meta draft here on the side of Dakota State. They went with the, the Phoenix and the Gul'dan offering them great wave clear and on the flip side there's a real lack of wave clear for durham college they've opted you know more for a, a, a team fight um setup malganis doesn't have great wave clear we know that genji doesn't as well and gray main's wave clear is really locked behind his ability to be in worgen form I expect to see bearded bear and work in camps early in the game uh that is definitely where uh i expect to see the greninja moving around almost all set All right, let's get that in-game overlay. Got it. All right, Dakota State looking to get us to a game three. Blue, 1442, the captain will be playing the Deckard Kane. Bobby Hill on the Gul'dan. Havix on the Johanna yet again. Sips will be playing Phoenix. And we do see Baby Eggs on the Dehaka. Well, thank you, Genji. It was a very nice compliment. Sir Taka will be playing the Urel. Great mount. Deathbringer on the Lily, Joe Jack on the Malganis, the Mecha Malganis. Panda is going to be playing the Ginjaru. And once again, we do see Bearded Baron on the Greninja. Durham College wants no part of the early rundown. And not a bad idea because as we do pull up a level one talents, we've got uh, the old Plasma Cutter down. We've got advanced targeting there for Phoenix, as well as this bad boy, Echoed Corruption on Gul'dan. Early stacks are going to be a key for Dakota State. They're going to look to scale very hard with their damage. Lily Greymane down there. Panda uh, doing Genji things. Picking at the well of Dahaka. To me, that signals the intent that Durham College is definitely going to be thinking more about the top lane. They want to try to pin the Dahaka in. And, I mean, it's... Listen, this is cheesy and annoying, but it ain't a bad idea. That well's gone. Maybe one more auto. Baby eggs in a tough spot. Because what this is going to, you know, really stop is while Dahaka does have certainly the, um, certainly the ability to self-sustain through his trait. Not being able to back up and take a well may force, you know, more bees, more hearts, if you will. There's some chip damage. Good response from the four-man. And Panda's just doing this. Dodges the root. Needs a couple of corruption stacks. Little bit of damage, and he's out. Flash our early game talents here. Now, Gannis working on time to feed. Every time you see him pop that old oh, great sleep, three, four members get locked in. The route to disengage, but that gets Joe Jack safely on out of there. There's the pop up. Decker Kane is in a bit of trouble. Bearded Baron trying to get up there to get a little bit more damage in there. Panda with a swift strike in. There's the root from Kane. Let's see how many members he gets through. Phoenix in trouble. Genji low. 
bit of ninja agility away. Top lane, Yurel is holding point against Sir Taco. In the bottom lane, nobody has moved to grab this one yet. Giants were picked up by Durham College. Panda doing this thing again. Yeah, he's got to get rid of that well. He's got a little bit more left. The four-man has been strong thus far. And the four-man... Listen, it stinks to have your wells removed. But it's not quite the end of the world, if you will. Because Gul'dan and Phoenix are not mana-dependent heroes. Joe Jack channeling on bottom. In the top lane, Genji has moved up against Baby Eggs. There's the Burrow, but with only 250 hit points, he goes down. Panda, the flex player for Durham College, has been flexing in game... Uh, late in game two and now in game one. Genji doing Genji things. Giants picked up by Dakota State. And we see Bearded Baron making the move towards the night camp. Baby Eggs has burrowed in. He's looking to break this channel. Durham did not make a move onto the dragon while they did have the ability to channel it. And I honestly, I like that. You need a little bit more pressure. You've certainly got to worry about Dahaka's global. You now know that it is up in the top lane. And if you're ahead in XP, as Durham College is, you don't have to pressure the Dragon Knight. You can just continue to play for the XP lead, maybe make the move when the level 7 comes through. You'll have that talent tier available. Joe Jack using Night Rush to get away. Up in the top lane, Yurel and Dahaka just going at it. Sir Taka with a Righteous Hammer, and now Dahaka has to worry about this camp. This is going to be a tough clear for him. We'll try to keep an eye on it. Four members of Dakota State there in the bot lane. Joe Jack with the fell claws hitting two members, but everybody's all right. Trying to figure out how to get rid of this giant camp. There's two members caught in sleep. Phoenix is the target. Sifts sliding on away with a warp, and now Greyman in a bit of a pickle. Using Morgan form to escape. Once again, up in the top lane. Now more chip damage coming through. Baby X at about half health. He'll be okay. He can always just hit W, I believe, and get out. However, he has no well. He has no gate. Bottom lane, the priority. Malganus is out of mana. Gul'dan. The drain is not enough. He goes down. Panda with yet another kill. Blue 1442 trying to get back to safety with Kane. There's the double channel. I expect Panda to make the move, and we do see Genji making it. Joe Jack trying to zone everybody out here. Keep an eye on Malganus with all of his CC. Bearded Baron chipping away at Johanna. Genji on the channel. Gets it. Yurel in the top lane up onto the fort. And the dragon begins to run it down mid. One level lead for Durham College. Looking good here in game number two. And now they can start to siege away. How does McGannis get through bands? Uh, it depends on how people feel about him. Asmodan get, did get through bands too. Uh, Hector, an NGS veteran, knows that Asmodan was probably the most banned hero out in the last few months of the amateur scene. See the dragon laying waste to the bottom wall. Doesn't quite finish it off. I got to play one game of Malganus in my scrims. We won, and then I get banned out. It's just a, it's a strong hero, and his just base kit is overtuned, and it's going to have to go through a series of nerfs. Dakota State with the invade here. Havoc's leading from the front. Only one bush available. You see Laws of Hope get popped on Johanna for the, for the extra sustain. We've got Gul'dan as well as Phoenix. Genji jumps onto the point. Malganis trying to get as much CC as possible. Deckard is stuck on this point. Bearded Baron going in. We see one pot come through, but Greyman is going to finish Kane off. Point sitting there. That camp will be picked off later because Bobby Hill is next. Panda with the deflect gets a little bit more chip damage onto Sifts. Two more kills. Four in total. The Greninja will slide back. Grab that bad boy. Let's see what kind of macro play Durham College can make. They are up 10-8. Looking at bottom camp. What do we get at level 10? Carry and Swarm. Go for the throat. Ardent Defender. Jugs. And Genji is holding. X-Strike. X-Strike's been the more popular uh, pick in the meta. Offers a, an escape. And really, anytime Dragon Blade is shown, everybody knows just to just run away when they hear Yuji no Keokara. 
30 seconds for the next objective phase. Malganus looking to get an engagement on pre-10. Phoenix is the target. We're going to need a little bit of knockback. Otherwise, he might get out. Panda with a great jump over. Needs some auto attacks. Uses X-Strike to convert the kill. Bottom lane has a camp pushing. Keeping an eye on Gul'dan. Bobby Hill does have the Horrify. We've got a Lornado. Blessed Shield as well as Purification Salvo. There's the Root. Connects on four people. Gul'dan is the target. Joe Jack. Not quite enough to get onto the Gul'dan. A little bit of low mana on Malganus. He'll have to be careful here. There's the Lornado. Bouncing back a number of the members of Durham College. Going back in is Joe Jack. He's kept his eye on Gul'dan the entirety of the game. Keep an eye on the sleep here. There it is. Disrupted. Big condemn there from Havocs. You're on the top lane has secured top. Fort has gone down. We also uh, do get adaptation there. From Dahaka. Take a quick look at our talents here. Gul'dan and Phoenix doing okay for stacking. Phoenix has the uh, the extra circle on Plasma Cutter. Greymane looks like he is moving towards the point. We check the stats. Jojak, if he's got Carrion Swarm, can live through this. I'm not sure if he's got the mana for it. Horrify comes through. Lornado knocking everybody back. Low. I think Malganus is gone. There's the cube. He goes down. Greymane has picked up the dragon, however, and that is moving on mid-fort. Consolation prize for the members of Dakota State University. Sif's moving on in. He gets kicked out. Dragonite will have none of that. Here's our Lele. Deathbringer sliding on up. 13's nearly here. Malganus is back in about 8 seconds. Third of the health left on the DK. And Durham thinking about top. Yes. Going to get in behind this Dahaka. Baby Eggs needs to be careful here. Might even have to global out. He's low. There's Burrow. He's got his trait going. Remember, he does have adaptation. There's Purification Salvo. Lili in big trouble. She goes down first. Sir Taco takes a ton of damage on the Urel. There's the Lornado. Jumps quite over it. Now Joe Jack is here. Urel with the Yarded Defender. Trying to absorb as much damage as possible. There's the Sleep. Two members connecting. On the backside, Panda with a kill on Gul'dan. But immediately... Ah, great tongue by Baby Eggs. Genji has a long way to go. I don't think he has any mobility. He goes down. 4v2 here. There's the cube. Greyman can't leap out. Joe Jack providing the CC for the retreat. And that will do it. Now again, this is so scary. Good counterplay there. Great drag from Baby Eggs. He does get the kill on Genjo. However, 6-3 and a one-level lead for Durham College Esports. They also did not achieve their intended objective, which was to remove the top fort from play. So, Dahaka has a little bit of a hiding spot. Both teams now will pick up their knights. Bahamut Gaming was over at the Running with Turtles battle for the Nexus event. Baha, a member of the Casters for Hire, and uh, our most esteemed member. We're going to pick him up on Sunday. Oh. We're going to have to pick up Phoenix in about 30 seconds as he goes down. Baby Egg's the next target. There's Adaptation. Righteous Hammer. Yorel trying to keep him there. There is the Burrow. Good CC. Follow up. Dahaka goes down. We get a little bit of Horrify. Yorel should go down on the backside. She's underneath the gate. Lily with the Jugs. Another solid Lornado from Blue. Counter kill. But couldn't save Dahaka. Twenty seconds before the next objective phase comes through. Eight four in terms of kills right now. We do see Durham College making the camp shuffle. This is what they did so effectively in game number one to pick up the win. This night camp should claim the wall if unattended. Malganus on the way up. We see Phoenix and Dahaka in the bottom lane. Genji making an appearance up in the top lane as well. Level away from 16 for Durham College. This is a huge opportunity for them here. If they pick up this Dragon Knight, they are going to be pushing onto a keep. The popular win conditions here on Dragonshire uh, bot obviously being the prime one. But mid can also be an effective win condition. Top doesn't ever really do anything. Johanna back there. Half level from 16. Your old's in the top lane. Durham was just sniffing out the possibility of a camp. We see Jojak. Watch the flank here with Genji. There's the pop-up on the Fell Claws. 
Kane's got a long way to go. Has to use Lornado. Looking to try to sustain himself with his own potions. Bless you, shield, and a great play by Havocs. Kane goes down. The Horrify is a little bit too late as Gul'dan cannot keep Malgenis off of Kane. Bearded Baron has a long way to go. Lili with the Jugs. A lot of low health bars. Trying to keep an eye on Dahaka. There's the sleep. A little bit of Night Rush. And Carrion Swarm. We finally do get it from Malgenis. Watch his health. He was at a quarter health. He's going to show back onto the map with about 60% of that. Joe Jack comboing in. We've got Blind as a Bat. He's focused in on the Phoenix. Doesn't quite finish the kill off. Panda dives in. X-Strike. And Phoenix is gone. Great follow from Genji. You can see how well Malganis does with Die of Heroes. He can go in, stay in, lock a target down. He does a massive amount of damage with Carry and Swarm. And that set up Panda. And that could be setting up Durham College for a keep, maybe even game. Urel. Just taking a peek in the top lane. I saw that low health bar. That's the Ardent Defender. Baby Egg starting to get a little bit of steam there on the Daaka after a rough early game. I've seen Baby X a couple times. Very good offlaner. Made a great play earlier in the game to get that drag on Genji. Let's see if maybe he's the key to unlocking uh, the comeback here for Dakota State. Wall is gone. Lili. There you are, hon. We'll slide back up. Dragon at about a half. Remember, this is Genji inside of it. Jojak stops the warp. Bearded Baron smelling blood. Finds it. The Horrify, again, a little bit too late. Greymane finishes off Phoenix. We see Jugs trying to cancel out all the Gul'dan poison dot damage. The Keep is the next target. Joe Jack trying to slide back. The root comes through. Does find Malganis, but he's okay. Dragon almost done. We see the Lornado come out. Nobody gets quite caught out by that one. Joe Jack with double sleep. We hear go for the throat. Getting procked. And Lily finishes Gul'dan off. There's another kill. Oh, and that looks like it's going to be game. Genji going nuts. We got blind as a bat and X-Strike. We got all kinds of mobility effects. Four kills in the end. Deathbringer trying to keep everybody alive. Was tanking a keep and Lili has gone down. There's Baby Eggs with the Dragon Malganis. No support. We have Greymane, Yurel, and Genji trying to finish this off. 70% on the core. Salvo gets interrupted. Jojek with a stop. 40%. 30. This should be it. And Durham College is going to advance. And a winning series. For Durham College Esports. Congratulations. They will move on in this setup. With a lot of just neat flex play. Panda looking damn good in two games. Played a Kerrigan in game one on Infernal Shrines. Playing the Genjo. There in game number two. Bearded Baron got two games on his gray main. Very effective. And we got to see Malganis for the first time. Once those forts were gone, uh, particularly in, in bottom lane, Joe Jack just went in deep, stayed in deep, has all of the cooldowns available and the sustain with Malganis to wait and be patient. And we saw the follow through come through uh, by Panda on the Genji. And late on the core fight, that that core fight gets started with uh, with Malganis knocking Phoenix out of the warp with Fell Claws, and it just continues. You got Blind as a bat as well as X Strike. It's just chaos. And when you have to deal with both Malganis as well as Genji, you lose sight of uh, that secondary DPS, which was Bearded Bear and uh, playing the Grey Mundo. He picked up four kills and led the game in hero damage. With some really big go for the throat plays. We actually have to update our score here with our super special awesome foul tool. 2-0 for Durham College. Remember, these are best of threes. So Durham College will advance. Jump back and take a look at our map selection screen just to give you guys this summary. Uh, shortly, what is going to happen is I am just going to go on a quick little break. I will throw a host over to one of my fellow cohorts from... The Casters for Hire, we have four casters today uh, working this tournament setup. I'm going to try to jump around, see if I can find us. Somebody moving for game three. Crow, uh, Crow Heroes, one of my good friends, has RPI in the University of Kentucky. I believe that's where we're going to send it. everybody at the end of this set.
All right, once again, Durham College at the number 38 seed picks off the favored Dakota State University technically better squad with a 2-0 victory. We will be back in the next round. Let's get that screen up there. Hey, back at 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern, pending a little bit of a delay as we go ahead and we move on to the next set. I'm going to shut down stream for now just so I can go ahead and sort of get retuned. Changing the overlays a little bit. The next set that I intend on picking up uh, will feature the University of Houston. Well, good friends with uh, their team captain, Mockery. Kid's a darn good player. One of the best tracers in NA. He might not admit it, but I've seen him 1v9. No big deal. All right, gang. I will be back. Until then, we'll throw the host over. Looking forward to catching you guys for round two of the Tespa Collegiate Series Heroes Fall Finale.